have these new overhead lights that are much more dish shaped and should project the light downwards. And these are for the overhead lights in here. So I'll be replacing these since they'll project the light downwards and I'll take the circular or kind of oval shaped bulbs in here and put them in a housing that's more designed to project the light outwards like one of these sockets over there. And just like that, it is daytime. <laughs> I really gotta get out of this habit of uh, forgetting to film the uh, final portions and the finished product of my tedious labor. Uh, I totally forgot to film it last night. Uh, I was pretty tired after wiring it all up. But so yeah, so I got the um, got the two rear speakers set up. So we have this one mounted right here. Um, I tried to line it up as much as possible with um, this kind of wooden trim here, so that it kind of follows the, I guess the symmetry or the pattern of it. It's a little close to the um, to the barometer here, so I'm thinking of relocating the clock and the barometer or at least kind of shifting it over but then again it is kind of drilled into the wood so there would be some holes there so um not too sure i'm gonna leave this here for the time being this unfortunately does not work i took the battery out uh, last night and tried to put a new battery in there's a bunch of that kind of acidic corrosion from a battery that leaked uh, inside it and i think it messed up the circuitry so unfortunately it does not work um, i might be able to buy the interior clock housing um, or excuse me, clock uh, kind of component, keep the housing um, and then have the clock there. Because it is a nice clock, I like it. And the barometer is actually super helpful. Um, it's so much easier than having to, you know, pull your phone out of your pocket. So the wiring definitely isn't my best wiring job. Um, and I also did not have any uh, smaller gauge wire, so this is actually pretty thick gauge for just speakers. I do have the 3M kind of sticky uh, pads with the hooks to, to route the wire. I might switch these out to something else, and eventually I would like to get the wires uh, installed um, kind of, you know, not visibly. So whether it's behind a wall or, you know, passing somewhere else through the boat, um, since they are a little bit unsightly, not, not the end of the world, but they are, um, they do, they do kind of stand out a little bit. So this one was super easy, just went straight in, down through this, um, the top of this uh, electrical panel cabinet, and then wired that into the rear excuse me rear left channel and then if you follow the other wire it goes up 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 and around and then back down and then across you need something to secure it tuck it in there and then up and then over to this speaker so I actually have it coming out of the top which is nice um, so this one of course it was a little bit longer of a um, wire run but uh, it still works you know sounds really good and I think uh, it is kind of at head level, so actually here, if I turn the camera around here, bear with me one moment. So it is kind of about head level, so you do kind of risk run the risk of you know hitting your head on it if you're um, you know underway and it's and it's super rough out. The nice thing is, is that the edges are rounded and the front the front piece here is pretty soft, so even if you you know whacked your head on it, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, definitely better than the. Uh, that kerosene kind of lantern that was there because that would that would probably hurt. Also, if you're cooking, you know, you look at the proximity to the stove. It's not like it's gonna burn it or anything, but it will maybe soak up some oils or greases or smells of the food being cooked underneath it. So, um, like I said, not the best spot, but for at least for temporary kind of solution right now, um, I think that works. So it looks pretty good. The 3M pads aren't the cleanest. They do kind of stand out. So I might try to get some like brass fittings or something that isn't white and plastic <laughs> and stands out against the, uh, the wood that much. Today is November 29th. I had my buddy here for the weekend on the boat and went out on the neighbor's boat. So unfortunately I wasn't able to get a whole lot done um, in terms of working on the boat this weekend. Did get a little bit things done here and there like those uh, speakers that I set up. Um, the other thing I wanted to attend to was to fix the uh, my first attempt at the, uh, this is the port, port light <laughs> steel uh, in the head. 
Um, if you recall, this is the one that I installed a couple weeks ago with my dad. And this one I tried to install on my own, but um, I didn't prep the frame enough and clean out the ridge that the seal actually locks into. So if you look at one of these seals, you can see that there's a ridge. And the ridge has some teeth on it. And that locks into an aluminum or, or a little slot in the aluminum that goes around the frame. And I didn't clean that out enough. And as well, I also found out that um, you can actually stretch these. So you kind of pull them like, like an exercise band. And you can stretch them out a little bit uh, longer uh, in the event that there just isn't enough coverage to completely fill the uh, area that it needs to fill. <clears throat> so the, this one went in just fine, didn't have to stretch it out. This one I did have to stretch it out. It was it was, um, it was not uh, large enough kind of right out of the bag. Um, and it was, you know, I'd get this corner up and then this one would come out and you know, vice versa. So uh, yeah, so it's looking good. I'm just waiting for this to dry now and probably gonna start packing up. I did work on my Raspberry Pi temperature, humidity, air pressure, and volatile organic compound little sensor kit here. Um, I'm having some trouble getting it to authenticate with the Marina Wi-Fi, so I might kind of write a script so that it um, auto-authenticates every six hours or so. And then the plan is to be able to see this data remotely so that I can view the onboard temperature, humidity, um, which are really the, the more important things. And then air pressure and volatile organic compounds is just kind of interesting. Um, carbon monoxide is considered a VOC, so we'll pick that up too. But it doesn't differentiate between carbon monoxide and other VOCs. So, for instance, if I had a diesel spill in here, um, if that rings a bell, <laughs> um, this would pick up some of the compounds that are um, kind of being gassed off, which is kind of cool. So then the plan is to show it on this display here, which will eventually be mounted up in this location. Um, and I'm going to use probably Grafana to create a little dashboard so that it'll feed the temperature sensor data into that dashboard. And then I can see it there. Um, and then the plan is to also forward the data to an off-site server that would host a web dashboard. That way I can see all of the um, sensor uh, inputs or I guess sensor outputs um, remotely um, but I really would like to have some peace of mind when um, I'm not on the boat and it's below freezing I want to make sure that the temperatures in the boat are okay um, since I haven't winterized anything yet so yeah that's pretty much it I'm uh, just about to wrap it up now um, and then head back to the house and see Sid um, and then hopefully be back next weekend and continuing to work on the projects I have come to the unfortunate realization that the head pump is leaking uh, rather steadily when the through haul is turned on. So you can see the water down here on the ground, kind of in this area. The seacock right now is turned off. Um, what happens when I turn this on, the water pressure comes up through this hose here, and then it meets the pump. I uh, can't remember, it's either either here or on the back, but the problem is is it's leaking out of this area. And uh, in my one of my previous videos, I did mention it would leak when I pumped, but unfortunately it seems like the rubber uh, in there has kind of deteriorated even further. And now it's also leaking not only when you're pumping, but also when it's stationary. Um, so I'm gonna have to look online, see if I can find some parts for it. I know that these pump units themselves are pretty inexpensive, but if the issue lies in just a rubber piece in there, it'd be a lot, lot easier to fix. Another day, another port light seal job. So I took off the old seal. You can see the fresh aluminum there on the inside. And I also removed the majority of the old silicone. And if I go down here and show you, this is the old seal. Um, you can actually see that's an indentation from the actual window itself. And you can see it's splitting a little bit there, which I have a feeling is where a lot of the water was coming through. Um, and you can just see overall it's, if I uh, zoom in a little bit here, you can see how there's some algae growth on it and it's just kind of cracked and, and uh, definitely seen better days. So. I have the 
new seal here looking pretty good and I'm just going to do one more pass with the magic eraser here it just kind of gets off some of the some of the little pieces of excess stuff so I'm just going to use that to get off some of the uh, remaining pieces of uh, silicone here's some of the silicone I got off with a little exacto knife and just as a reminder for or I guess for a reference point as into wh which port light this is this is the port side aft cabin and this is the area which on one of my previous videos I showed you has a large amount of water damage um, to this floor panel which actually isn't an original floor panel it's a floor panel that the previous owner replaced most likely due to water damage which means that this port light has been leaking for quite a long time and there we have it we have the new gasket in place and if you look closely there you'll see some fresh silicone that I also put in to aid in the security and uh, waterproofness of the seal. I still have to go up and silicone the upper edge there, but overall it's looking pretty good. As expected, these two port lights here are working great. It did rain um, a couple days ago and I didn't have any problems with them. Just figured I'd test it out just to be on the cautious side. So yeah, these look good. Um, so this is our, I guess this is our uh, control. <laughs> and then here we have the new hatch. And I did spray it for quite a bit longer than I showed it on video. Uh, I did notice a little bit of wetness down here, kind of in that corner. I don't have this fully notched shut because the the rubber is still too brand new and fluffy, so I actually can't even get it shut yet. Um, that's that's to be expected. That's the same with uh, this one. Took a little bit before I could get these down all the way. Honestly, I can probably get these all the way out too. And this has been shut for the past couple of days. Yeah, still need a little bit longer. So it takes a little bit for the rubber to get kind of broken in um, since it's so big and fluffy. But yeah, looking good. And even if there is a little bit of water coming in down here, I can guarantee it's probably 95% better than what it was before. There's my water catcher from the rain that we had a couple days ago. Overall, pretty pleased. I'm just waiting for the final seal to come in. It's on back order for the other port light over there.